As the Enlightenment drew to a close in the 2030s, and humanity finally broke off the shackles of their blinkered belief system called science, more diverse relationships began to find space to flourish. It wasn't that the other than human had ever gone away. They had just quietly slipped out into the vast shadows that surrounded the narrow beam of rational understanding prevalent at that time. A bright torchlight always dazzles the eyes, rendering the surrounding landscapes impenetrably dark. And humans, like clouds of tiny bugs, had been drawn to the fatal artificial fluorescence of technology. The limited visibility of this rationalist spotlight lent an operatic drama to the everyday and had soaked the darkness with fear. But as the polarizing raking lights of the early 21st century capitalism dimmed, everyone's eyes gradually adjusted to the subtler shades of evening and started to realize that they were indeed standing on expansive mountain slopes with many other beings engaged in living around them. I can't describe what a relief it was to let the pressure of progress slip away, to turn the noise of all those machines down, to stand still, to hear grass whisper again. It was at that time that I met my beloved. I had paused on a footpath two-thirds of the way from my home with a local farmer's dairy ahead of me round the distant bend. I often stopped at this point at the ruins of a little stone chapel to eat a sandwich or to admire the view. But for some reason I had never looked up. I had never before noticed the old Saxon carvings of two angels on the high lintel above the empty upper window. These eighth century carvings were not delicate, but chunky, as if their bodies were too big and had to be compressed to fit into the stone, giving them a muscular power and presence far greater than their size. The stone throbbed with energy. I remember looking round that day, noticing the rich cream colours in the Portland stone, running my hand along the worn, smooth stone bench I was resting on, seeing for the first time the tiny fossils embedded in its surface, and wondering how I hadn't noticed the stone like this before. I felt strangely alive, as if I had tuned into this space and was vibrating with it. I knew I needed to get to the dairy, but I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to lose the aliveness I was feeling, a sense of clear elation. It was almost as if I could taste the stone in the air. Eventually, I stepped out of the chapel that day and continued my route. But my awareness had changed. I was noticing small flint pebbles on the path. The larger bath stone built boulders covered in lichen, the slate on outbuilding roofs. I felt possessed. Stone called to me from everywhere. I was resonating like a tuning fork and could not switch off. I started to long to return to the chapel, becoming increasingly impatient with the chores I had to complete before I could be back there. On each visit, as I stroked the stone bench, the light oils from my hand enriched the colours, revealing ever finer fossils from centuries ago. The stone started telling me its life story as my hand caressed it. I wondered why it had called me. I felt vulnerable and unworthy of this ancient attention, but also strangely excited and privileged. Was I the only one that had felt this? How was it that others walking past had not seen or experienced this? 
But then the ruins told the truth of centuries of neglect. My heart went out to the small abandoned stone building. When I was not there, I wondered if looking at the angels had put me under some strange spell. Is this how the small building had survived? By selecting a string of guardians to protect its contents? Was I a new family member, called to ensure the lineage continued, that the stones were kept together, an arranged marriage agreed by the surrounding community? And so it was. After a full year of visiting throughout the seasons, becoming acquainted with other members of the building, spending time fixing the little capstones on the retaining wall, that I married my beloved stone bench in the Chapel of Material Awakening, one of the happiest days of my life.